Hi, welcome to learnhowtogarden.com and in this episode of the 10 Minute Gardener we're going to actually have a tour of the gardens that we grow in, the 10 Minute Garden, the allotment and the fruit garden and it's the 16th of February 2014 and it's to show you what we have to deal with as gardeners really. If you're not already subscribed to us at Learn How to Garden, there's a link below this film. Click on that, it'll take you to the website, input your email address, and that means that each time we put up a film we can let you know, you get our free monthly newsletter, and you can see the courses and lectures that we do here at Learn How to Garden. I've had um, lots of emails and tweets and questions saying, how did you fare with the latest of the storms? And I have to say, these winter storms have been the worst I can remember, and I've been gardening for close on 50 years and I walked down here this morning into the gardens and the first thing you notice is this. This is the potting shed and this is the potting shed window. Uh, this had flipped straight round onto the roof which is covered in glass and smashed and you think well that's not too bad really but a lot of the seedlings that were on the potting bench have been sodden, they've been blown off. That's the first thing. If we just turn around where we are here is just next to the little 10 minute garden. We've had fences taken down in the 10 minute garden. We've lost three or four panes of glass out of the little six foot uh, by eight foot greenhouse. But one of the things that happened during these storms is we had one of the main power lines that runs across the top of the gardens come down. And Southwest Power, or Western Power, I think we should call them now, have the right to come onto your uh, land to sort that out. And Technically, any trees you have near a power line, they have to do what's referred to as a three metre clearance, so there's nothing near those. And it was an oak tree about a quarter of a mile up to my left that had taken down the wires. When they tried to clear that, they actually spun the wire into uh, some of my eucalyptus that I grew from seed 25 years ago. And I just want to show you what professional tree surgeons will do to your eucalyptus if you're not here to look after them. As you can see, the eucalyptus behind me has just been butchered. They've gone up about 20 feet and just taken out the two main boughs and dropped them. And that would be bad enough, but we might be able to rescue that because some eucalyptus will spring back from the crown. What I have here, if we pan down, is the eucalyptus they've just felled. They've taken this off at the ground. This is like 40 feet of eucalyptus. It's hit the chicken huts on the way down. And they've now just left me with this to deal with. Now, at this time of the year, I should be thinking about getting my onion sets in, more broad beans, finishing loading the beds with compost, instead of which we're dealing with this. And But this isn't the worst of it. This is the third of my eucalyptus. This is a snow gum. The seed came from Tasmania. And it's got some nice branches here at the bottom. If we pan back, you'll actually see they're the only branches it's got left. I can't quite understand what they've done here. You'd have been better off just taking the tree down. What I'm going to do here is remove these bottom branches and hope that it springs again from the top so that we actually have um, a pollarded tree that grows out. That may happen if any branches spring from the bottom. We'll just take those out and try and encourage this because you've got to look at the positives really here. There's nothing I can do with what they've done. By the time I arrived, you know, it's in the dark. This is what I'm presented with. So we've got to look at the positives. Uh, Benjamin Higgledy, Ben the flower farmer, uh, a couple of his beds are behind me. In fact, the bed that's directly underneath most of these branches um, is his biennial bed. I don't think he's actually seen this yet. Hopefully he will see it before he sees this film. Um, but I'm going to clear some of these off in a minute. Uh, and hopefully some of those plants will actually be OK and we'll be able to rescue them. But what I'm trying to get over to you is that it's everybody's suffering. Everybody's having a really, really bad time with these gales. But we've got to be thinking forward. You know, you've got to look at what you've got and move forward. We need to be getting seeds sown now. It's a glorious Sunday afternoon. There are birds singing. They're going to be start nesting very, very soon. Our chili should be underway. We're going to be thinking about tomatoes and things like that. Um, aubergines going in very, very soon now. Last but not least, we're going to go down to the allotment. We are underwater on the allotment, but we'll go and show you the other problem we have there. So for those of you who've watched Learn How to Garden before, this is the willow hedge we have just next to our allotment. And if you uh, look down here, you can see that we have 
technically slightly damp ground at this moment in time. But what's really interesting about this is because we grow in no dig raised beds, I'm going to show you what the beds look like. One of the real positives of no dig is this, the structure of your soil. With which just standing here behind me, that's where it's absolutely flooded. Because this is raised, it's raised about a foot. And because it's not continuously broken down as a soil, this is just composted from the top, layered up. You've got soil that is friable, and you could plant in this quite happily. And I think that this winter has shown more than ever that you've got to keep your soil in good heart, you've got to get the soil really balanced. And we've still got things that we're cropping down here, believe it or not. We'll swivel around to one of the other beds and I'll show you, we've still got leeks we can take out, we've got some Jerusalem artichokes. But the one thing you'll notice as we swivel around is I do have a bit of a problem with the polytunnel. These are the last of the leeks we've got in. We've still got some uh, winter cabbage, we've got, still got Brussels coming, we've got spinach, perpetual spinach that's nearly uh, been cropping for a year, and we've got Jerusalem artichokes. But what I wanted to show you, if the dogs will move out of the way, is that the soil here still isn't compact, it's not sodden, it's draining really, really well because of those techniques we're using. One of the things we may have to do this year, though, is invest in a couple of those rolls of tape to sort out the polytunnel. The polytunnel's taken a bit of a battering. It's where we grow the tomatoes, the aubergines, all the things like that here at Learn How to Garden. We, it's one of the main places that we film a lot of our propagation seed sowing. But I think it's going to be a couple of months before we'll be able to use it. One of the um, little things you should be aware of, if you're ever put in a plastic tunnel like this, is you need to do it on the warmest day you can find and a still day. And the other trick that I was always told is that put a heater inside it, drape the plastic over the top, put a heater in and get it as warm as you can so that the plastic stretches as far as it can and you can get it as tight as possible. The tighter you can get the cover on your tunnel, the longer it'll last and the better it'll be. So you put a heater inside, gas or electric, get it really, really warm, and that's when you tighten it up. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is that these things are just cyclical. There are things that are sent to try us, but we do need to be thinking positively. This is a hydrangea, and I want you to focus right in here. A day after the strongest winds I can remember down here, one of the worst storms that I've lived through since I've been gardening here, which is 21 years, this hydrangea knows spring is just around the corner. In our newsletter for this month, we'll be going through all the things that we should have underway, all those things we should be um, thinking about getting in the ground. I've got uh, a different method that I'm going to use for growing a couple of very large chilies this year based on the quad growth system from Greenhouse Sensations and a really really great product to keep that carrot root fly and the uh, allium flies, things like that, butterflies, off your brassicas. It's a German product a bit like um, horticultural fleece but much much tougher. Thanks a lot for watching Learn How to Garden. Please don't get despondent with what we've got to do. I've got lots and lots of people helping me. I've got dogs that I'm not sure are being a help. Um, it's just one of those things. No one got injured. We've still got things growing. It's a beautiful day. You know, worse things happen at sea, and I'm sure they did this time. Thanks a lot for watching.